Hello, Tab Nation. It's your boy Tom, and today uh, we're revisiting actually kind of a Chrome extension automation tool that I actually was my first video I ever did on this channel. Um, it kind of took this extension, mixed it with Auto Hotkeys. Uh, it does very well. It's helped a lot of people. Uh, but today I wanted to dive into it uh, in a different way and revisit it where we're not even going to be using auto hotkeys. We're just going to be talking about how to automate Chrome. And when I say automate Chrome, it's crazy what this extension is capable of doing. It does a lot. Uh, I mean, something as simple as opening new tabs or closing tabs or muting um, all the way up to, you know, more complex stuff like filling out forms and whatnot. Uh, it's really cool, so let's take a look at it. And it's called, obviously I'm going to put the uh, URL in the description below, but it's called Auto Control. Uh, it's keyboard sh shortcuts, mouse gestures. Um, I already have it installed, uh, so right here it says Remove from Chrome. But obviously if you have not installed it, you just click here, it'll say like Install or something. I forget what it usually says. Once it's launched, it's going to be up here, the little puzzle piece. Um, you got it right here, the little AC with the yellow logo. You can pin it, um, and it's going to be up here now, so I'll do that. You click that, it's going to automatically open a new tab uh, with this, and this is what you're going to see. This is a fresh start, um, so as you see, it's saying create your first action or see a quick demo. Demo is pretty uh, self-explanatory. It's basically just like a little slideshow, um, but we're going to go a little bit more in depth than what the demo shows you. Um, it's completely free, all that, uh, you can't always support the project here, you know, people like this, they do such amazing things, and they put it out for free in the hopes that, hey, maybe you'll give them a, a nice little, uh, charity thing there. Um, so yeah, <clears throat> we're gonna start with our actions. So we're gonna click new action, and it gives you this nice little box here. So our trigger which if you're familiar with a lot of my videos or auto hotkeys is basically a hockey. If I do this, perform these actions. So a lot of my videos I do F1. So when you have this uh, yellow box and it's got that blinking cursor, you can actually just push whatever key or combination of key you want. So F1, for example, is what I usually use. And then you click out and now F1 is our hotkey. So when I push F1, it's going to perform whatever actions over here that I tell it to. Now, obviously, you can um, click it. If you don't like it, you can say delete. Usually, you have to double tap. Um, and then we can do it again. So we could do even something more like shift F1. So now, if I push F1, it's not going to do anything. But if I do shift F1, then it's going to perform my action. So this is really cool. Um, it's very uh, versatile. Um, but let's just keep it simple with F1. So our action. This is where the cool stuff's really going to be happening. <clears throat> you got a lot of options. You know, you can do back, forward, reload. I'm not going to go through every single one of these, obviously. Um, but just search for what you want. These, uh, the basic actions are, well, they're the basic. Close tabs, open new tab, um, stuff like that. We can then jump into the advanced actions. And it's uh, organized by category, which is very nice and clean. Uh, tab actions, go forward, go back. Window actions, uh, fit to grid, move, resize. So versus you having to go up and you know make it full screen, you could just do a hotkey. Uh, there's a bunch of clipboard options here too that are nice. Uh, copy, hovered, URL, all that kind of stuff. My favorite though by far is if you go to other and go to run script, you can actually insert JavaScript. And that's what makes this truly super powerful. Because even if what you're trying to do is not an option defined already, you can basically, I mean, seriously, even if you're not a coder, you can Google JavaScript that performs this in Chrome. And you're pretty much going to find something that you can copy and paste and just slightly tweak uh, without really knowing how to uh, code. So right here, uh, it gives you an example right away, which is alert, which is like a pop-up, hello world. 
So let's go ahead and do that one real quick. Um, but the cool thing is you can also add other actions. Instead of performing one action, we can do multiple. So for example, let's say we want to go back and do, well, I don't really know, full screen, stay on top. Sorry, it's been a while since I've used some of these basic ones. But yeah, I mean, I guess we don't really need to. Um, but yeah, basically you just pick what you want it to do. You can make it open a specific URL. Uh, mute tabs, move, detach, blah, blah, blah. I can't think of one. That would be good. Duplicate tabs. Yeah, we'll try some out. We'll just keep it simple with F1. Run script, hello world. Um, so yeah, the great thing is it's ready to go. There's no closing Chrome down and reloading it. You don't have to run it. It's automatically already there. So I'm going to go ahead and push F1. And... Alright, hold on. Why is it not working? Oh, I believe. That. That's fine. Alright, we'll just make it do a new tab. So there you go, I pushed F1 and it opened up a, a new tab. Um, and you can also change it, it gives you options, uh, default page or a blank page. Probably keep it at the default. Uh, but yeah, every time I push F1, new tab. Is you can... And have as many of these as you really uh, heart desires. You know, we can now do Shift F1 if we want to keep that same one. Um, and then we can do, uh, you can always have no action. Why would you want to do that? Maybe Chrome already has something built in where if you press this key, it already performs a built in action. This is a way to disable that. So that's one thing that's really nice. Uh, we could do like switch to previous tab. Um, so now we're going to do F1, and then we're going to do Shift F1, and it took me right back to that previous tab. Um, so that's really cool. Um, but yeah, I, I just explore all the different options. You can chain them, all that kind of stuff. It's really great. Now, if you're using this like in a work environment, um, <clears throat> you might want to be able to share this with other coworkers. Options. those once again um, but you're gonna be going down uh, to oh here it is synchronize save and restore so you're gonna click save it's gonna save to wherever you want to as a what is an AC s file I believe file and then you email it or flash drive to whoever you want to share it with, they'll then come to options and instead of save, they'll say restore from file. That will automatically open it for them and load all your actions that you had. Oh, there we go. For some reason I had a bit of a lag. When I'm recording, my computer gets a little weird. Uh, so it is an ACS. Uh, file, name it whatever you want. It automatically puts the date, which is nice uh, for keeping track of that. So yeah, you just save this to your uh, desktop, and then you... Like I said, this is being very buggy, but there's the file. Here's where it's asking me to load, so I can do that. I'm going to push cancel. Uh, now it's catching up. <laughs> oh god. Um, yeah, so mouse gestures, um, that's another one I want to point out. Instead of using a hotkey, uh, we can do that. Um, you can do eight directions or four directions, and you can actually test, which is really cool. So you can start moving your mouse around and see exactly what um, the gestures are going to be. Um, so when you're in here, you're just holding the right uh, mouse button. So you can see like all the different directions. Obviously, that looks like some Harry Potter spell. You would never want to do something that complicated. But it's a good way to practice and get a feel for how that's going to work. But let's talk about triggers real quick then uh, with gestures. Um, so you're going to do the same thing. New action, trigger, click it. 
But instead of just pushing a key, you're going to click this right here. So you click that, and it's going to say move your mouse. Once your gesture is done, finish with left click. So let's do down and to the right. So down and to the right. And I'm going to left click, and that's saved now. So let's go back in here, choose our action. We'll keep it with uh, open new tab. And the way it does this now is I'm moving my mouse. I'm going down and to the right. It's not doing anything. You have to hold the right key, uh, or sorry, right button down on your mouse to perform the action. And it actually shows this, which is really cool. So I got that down and to the right. And now I'm going to let go of the right button. And voila, it gives you a little check mark saying, hey, this is an action I recognize. And then it performs the action. So that's what's really cool about that. Um, obviously, you can make them as simple. I, I recommend never doing a single mouse movement because that's going to happen a lot, especially if I right click. I might hold it a little too long. Um, so having those two or three uh, gestures is kind of uh, recommended, honestly, I would say. Um, but yeah, another thing to explore is your trigger is an event. Um, so this one doesn't even really require your input. It just does something certain. Uh, there's a lot of decent options on here. Um, so, you know, if a tab is closed, for example. So anytime I close a tab, you know, what is it going to do? Or actually, let's do... I like the clipboard changes. Yeah, there we go. Um, so anytime the clipboard changes, let's open a new tab. Maybe I want to, um, so, so we can go back here and we can just go here and push control C. So it obviously recognized that I just did something with the clipboard and it automatically opened that tab. So it's really cool. It's just the flexibility this has with only three trigger options, uh, which is, you know, hotkey gestures. Or it's just kind of the same thing. It's, uh, you know, got a little, like, you know, images, basic uh, categories here. Um, I'm trying to think what else to really talk about. I guess in the... Oh, in here. Add additional toolbar... Uh, to, bleh, can't talk today. Toolbar buttons next to the address bar and use them to trigger your actions. So that's actually another option is versus me having to uh, do a gesture, an event, or a key. Maybe I want to physically click a button. As you see, it gives shows you like one, two, three. So if I click one, it might do something. Um, so it's pretty good at explaining everything as you go through. Um, so that one you can assign, you know, a clickable button, which is really cool too. Uh, yeah, I think that's really all I got on this. Hopefully you all... Uh